Thanks for watching. In this short tutorial, we are going to discuss bringing in an image into the Roll and Cut Studio and automatically creating the cut lines for the cutter. This time around, we are going to bring in a JPEG. And to bring in a JPEG, we use the import function, which is at the top here on the main menu bar. I left click on import, and when I left click on import, our import dialog box does appear. Here we can change the location of what we're looking in with the drop down arrow. And you can see you can uh, utilize and access your different um, drives as well as your file folders. Here I'm just going to choose my artwork. The files of type that you can bring in are bitmap and JPEG as far as raster files go. If you scroll down here you can also bring in the Roland STX file as well as an Illustrator, AI, or EPS file. As a side note, with the Illustrator file, it does have to be um, Illustrator 8 or lower. Um, I typically use Illustrator 8 or EPS. We are going to bring in a JPEG. It is a raster file, so it does not have uh, the vector lines to it yet. I'll go ahead and left click on the Florida de lis Go ahead and press Open. And when I press open, what we see here is it is dropped onto my grid on the background. And uh, you can see it's a little bit larger of what we're viewing. We can click on this button called Fit to Screen. When I left click on that, it zooms in just on the area that's selected. And you can see that this Florida Lee is selected with the four black notes. If it's not selected, it, you know, left click off to the side, it's not selected we left click back on top of it, it is selected. In order to put the cutting lines in, make sure that it is selected. So you do have the eight black or the four black nodes around it. We'll go to object and then image outline. When I left click on image outline, a new dialog box appears. Here's where can I can adjust the image density and usually it picks what it thinks is best. If I bring it to the left and go lighter, you can see that the image is getting a little bit uh, slimmer. And if I bring it all the way to the left, it actually goes away. As I bring it to the right, it does get darker. I get more noise with it. Depending upon your image, it may be beneficial to go left or right. Once I am happy with, uh, with the image density, I click on Extract Contour Lines. When I left click on Extract Contour Lines, you can then see the image as well as these blue lines. If you would like to deselect the image or not view the image and see what the lines do, you can left click on this View Image. And that goes away and what you can see now are the contour lines or the cut lines. If you'd like to deselect that as well, you can click on that or just view the image. You can see that that does change our um, are viewing what we are viewing. Once I press OK, it traces it right on top of the design. So I have two parts of this on my software. I have the co contour cut, which I can actually place wherever, and then I actually have the JPEG. Um, if I just want the cut and I don't want the JPEG anymore, I can delete it, but this will not affect my cutting because the cutter or the GX 24, 300, uh, 400, or, or 600, um, that will not affect anything because we are only dealing with the blade cut lines here. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And now what we have left is I left click on it. I now have my uh, cut that I can put onto the cutter. The next thing we are going to talk about is uh, sizing as well as some of the properties such as rotating or slanting or skewing. With this area selected, you can tell it's selected because it is um, highlighted blue and you do have your nodes as well as your arrows around it. I will go ahead and click on the fit button here. And in here, if I'd like to change my size numerically, I can go up to object and then scroll down to properties. When I left click on properties, here I have a tab called size and shape. With the size and shape, I can change the width as well as the height independently. Or if I click keep aspect, once I change the width, it'll automatically change the height. 
So what I will do to change the width and the height together, I do have the keep aspect ratio check marked. I will go ahead and change the width to 10 inches and when I left click inside height you can see that the height will change proportionately. We'll go ahead and press OK and you can now see that it does get larger. I can move that onto my screen. Let's go ahead and hit the fit to screen and do that one more time and you can see now that it fits onto our paper. Let's go back to the object properties. So we'll go to object and then properties and here we also have a rotation angle. So you can enter in any angle between 0 and 359 and it will rotate your design. So let's go ahead and rotate this uh, 90 degrees. We'll go ahead and press OK and you can now see that that rotates your design. One last thing in the properties function, so we'll go to object and then left click on properties, is you also have a slant. So we'll go ahead and slant this 45 degrees. Let's just see what it does. Press OK and you can see that it does kind of skew our design in the slant um, angle that you selected. To get it back to um, you know, to normal, if we go back to our properties, we'll go back to slant, bring that at a zero, bring our rotation angle at a zero, and let's just bring the size back down to about five. Again, the height will change proportionately because we do have that keep aspect on. We'll go ahead and press OK. You can see that change. We'll go ahead and hit fit. It'll fit what I have selected onto screen and you can see that uh, even though that we can alter it, we can also bring it back to normal. In this next section, we'll talk about changing the size uh, on screen rather than do numerically like we just did before. At the bottom of our screen, we can see um, some quick properties such as our cursor location, center, size, grid, and the zoom percentage that we're at. Right now, I am left clicked on the actual design. If I'm not, you can see that it won't be highlighted blue, nor will you have your nodes going around the area. I'm going to left click on that area and you have four corner nodes, which are squares, and then you have four arrows that surround the top, middle, bottom, middle, right, middle, and left middle. The four corners will size the design X and Y. Now when I size the design X and Y, it will pull it from the opposite corner. So if I place my cursor over on top of one of the nodes, it does turn into a two-way arrow. And if I left click, hold, and drag, you can see that I am changing the size. Now it doesn't change it proportionally, but it changes size X and Y together. Although if I do hold my shift button, it will change size X and Y proportionally. And all I'm doing here is just left clicking, holding, and dragging. Once I let go of my left click, I can then let go of my shift key and uh, it changes the size proportionately. I did go a little bit smaller. The top and bottom will change the size vertically. If I left click, hold and drag, you can see that it, it does uh, pull it from that opposite corner or that opposite end and you can see that um, you can either mirror or scrunch it down, make it taller, however you'd like to do that. If you do hold control, it will allow it to do it from the center point. And that brings me to another um, point that I did forget on this, is that if I do size this from the, the corner node and I hold shift and control, it will do it center and proportionate. If I just hold control, it'll just do it from the center, it'll size it from the center rather than the opposite corner. Now the side arrows, the right and left arrows, if I left click, hold and drag, you can see that it will size it um, X or the width. If I hold the control, it will size it from the middle and do the width from the middle. Once I let go and I let go of my control key, you can see how you can control the size that way. In working with this design, we have seen that when you are single clicked on the design itself, you can change the size as well as go to the object and then go to properties like we did before. 
Now if we left click on this design again, right now my cursor is on top of the design and I left click on it again, I get four circles as well as a little diamond. This diamond on top will um, control the slant, so if I do place my cursor over on top of it, my cursor turns into a two-way horizontal arrow and once I get that I left click hold and drag and you can see that I, as I'm dragging, I'm dragging left to right, uh, I am controlling that slant. So you can change that uh, visually if you'd like. Now once I'm finished I just let go of my left click. You can also change the rotation of the design just on screen. If you place your cursor over one of the circle uh, corner nodes, you can see that your cursor turns into a little um, curled two-way arrow. Once I get that curled two-way arrow, if I left click hold and drag, and I'm dragging around in a circle motion, you can see that I can rotate uh, that design, design however I'd like. It is rotating it from the center, so you can see how that rotates, and any one of these are going to rotate the design from that center point. Now, if you are ever unhappy with some of the changes that you made, you can always hit your undo button. At the top here, we do have the undo button. So once I place my cursor over it, I just single left click and it will undo the changes that I did make. So you can see that it'll, you know, undo your rotating or your stretching and skewing or your slanting. Whatever the steps that you may have taken, it will undo and consequently it will also redo. So you can also do re click the redo button and it will redo your steps. Now if you would like to break apart this design or you would like to ungroup it, right now it is all one piece. With it being all one piece, um, when I do move the design, it will move the whole thing. Let's say I wanted to take certain elements and delete them or I wanted to move elements around. What I would do is while this is all selected, it is left click selected, I would then go to object on my main menu bar and scroll down and left click to select break polyline. When I left click to select break polyline, I left click off to the side to deselect everything. I can now see that each piece of this cut file or this cut design is separated so then I can you know restructure the way the design is laid out if I would like to delete an area I can just simply click on the area and then hit delete on my keyboard left click and then hit delete or I can select each piece size it rotate it depending upon which uh, if I single left click or you know do another left click so I can always go here and, and change anything that I want. If you would like to select more than one piece, if I left click to select one piece and then I move over another piece and left click to select, it will move from one to the other. To select multiple pieces, I need to hold my shift key down and left click select. If you'd like to group them back together, what we can do is hold the shift, left click select all of them, go back to object, and then go to integrate polylines. Once I do that, it is all back as one piece. Let's go ahead and click on the fit and you can see that is all one piece in my design. So in object, uh, integrate polylines will group, break polylines will ungroup. Thanks for watching and I hope you will watch our other Roland Cut Studio tutorials.